Hello friends, welcome to VTeacher. So in this video, I am going to tell you about the dynamic systems development method. So the other name or short name for this one is DSDM. So this method, so mainly focusing on the development of or building the and maintaining the systems which meet tight time schedule and constraints through the use of incremental. So it mainly focusing on the whichever is having the highest tight time schedules. So that means so to maintain with the or to face competitive or competitive environment with the other business environments. So it will be very helpful for the customer to develop the project. So in this DSDM, so it is an iterative software process. So in which each iteration follows 80% rule, right? So that means in each iteration, you are going to prepare a highest priority, highest priority requirements will be taken. So those requirements will be taken. And from those requirements also, you are preparing only the 80% work. So this is called 80% rule. So what happened to the remaining 20%? So that is the question, right? So look at this point. So this is the only enough work is required for each increment to facilitate a movement to the next increment. Why? Because it is an increment only, not the final product. So 80% of the work is more than enough. So that work will be delivered to the customer and customer will do some testing and he will uh, happy with that and he will give you feedback. So if he is not happy, he will provide some more suggestions to you. So that has to, has to be developed in the project. So that is why so 80% of the project or requirement will be completed and the remaining 20% will be completed after the later or some business requirements will be added. So if some other requirements are added, so and if any no changes have not done at that particular point, so at this particular point, you are going to do the remaining 20% work, right? So that is how this DSTM method work. So we'll see some kind of uh, most important points in the DSTM method is, so DSTM, so you'll follow some kind of consortium. You can see the website, you can check it here. So this consortium is a worldwide group of member companies that collectively take on the role of keeper of the method. So this group, this consortium, so will follow this kind of DSDM method. So they are keeping this kind of method in the development process. Okay. And this consortium has a defined an agile process model called DSDM life cycle. So it provides a new life cycle. So that is called DSDM life cycle. So we already know about the SDLC nothing but software development life cycle. So it follows some process in the development of any software project. So whereas this DSDM method also prepares some kind of life cycle. So that begins from the feasibility study that establishes the basic business requirements and constraints and is followed by a business study. So that is going to identify the functional and information requirements. So at this uh, phase, you are going to find out the feasibility study. So whether this particular project is suitable to complete or whether it is going to solve the user issues or not. So all these things will be verified at the early stages of this DSTM method. And also, so you are going to find out the requirements and then the what are the constraints against that. And it is going to follow a business study. So you are going to prepare a business study also for that particular product. Okay. And then you are going for the next step. So this is what actually happening in the DSDM life cycle dynamic systems development method. So here, so this DSDM, so it is going to provide three different interactive cycles, nothing but iterative cycles. Okay. So these three iterative cycles. So what exactly they are doing is, so see the first one here. So first one is functional model iteration. So in this model or iteration, 
you are going to focusing on the a set of incremental prototypes that demonstrate the functionality for the customer so you are going to prepare set of prototypes so each prototype having some kind of requirements or a new requirements and added functionalities so it is going to prepare that set so whatever the customer required in the early stages so that is why this is called functional model iteration in the next one design and build iteration so sometimes we can call these two methods in one section only so here in the design and builder iteration method so it revisits prototypes built during the functional model iteration and to ensure that each has been engineered in a manner that will enable it to provide operational business value and users so what exactly this design and build iteration follows is so it is going to check the previous previous iteration so whether that one is properly done or not so if any changes have to be done or not so that will be checked in this phase and you can see this point so in some cases the functional model and also the design and build iteration occur concurrently so it can be done in a parallelly so that is why so we are using these two methods so sometimes in a one situation also so the last one so in the dstm method is so implementation how you are going to implement the requirements from the user or customer so here so the implementation places the latest software increment so whatever the latest increment is there so it places on top and this is called a operationalized prototype so that will be converted into the operational environment so whatever the increment as there so that will be operationalized so from that unit to the you are going to convert into operational environment so in this environment what you are going to do is so here the increment may not have 100% complete so it will not be completed 100% so we already know dsdm follows 80% rule so why because at each and every iteration it implements only the 80% work so remaining 20% work will be done after some time or in the next iteration or at the final stage of the project so that is why so this increment may not be 100% complete or sometimes so changes may be requested at the increment is put into the place so agile methodology mainly focuses on change requirement policy so new requirements will be added to the process flow at any point of time so that is why changes may be requested as the increment is put into the place so once so you started the work one of one particular increment after that also there may be a chance of getting new requirements for that particular increment okay in either case in either of this case so dsdm development work continuously by returning to the functional model iteration activity this model will be continuously work and then again it returns to the functional development or functional model iteration so from then it starts the process and again it goes to the same step that is how this dsdm method works thank you